just only for the nation. A radical guy, it's time to make changes, bring in interviews and radical education. Yeah, yeah. Hello and welcome to another episode of A Radical Podcast, the audio epicenter for those who question, challenge, and resist the status quo. I'm your host, Jason Bayless, and I have an exhilarating lineup for you today that will rattle some cages, figuratively and literally. In this episode, we're taking you on a journey across continents and ideologies, from the back streets of Lincoln, Wisconsin, to the bustling cities of Australia. We're diving deep into the world of animal rights and direct activism, spotlighting groups that are shaking the pillars of traditional thought and practice. Coming up in our anarchist and radical news segment, we'll explore a recent headline that has Wisconsin fur farmers and law enforcement agencies on high alert. Who's behind it? And what does it mean for the larger landscape of animal rights? Then, in resistance around the world, we'll unpack the controversial yet profoundly impactful tactics of the Animal Liberation Front. Who are they? And what drives them to such daring feats of activism? And of course, in our About a Radical Guide segment, we're featuring an Australian initiative that's empowering individuals to take direct action. It's a resource hub that's as enlightening as it is inspiring. So sit back, get comfortable, but not too comfortable, because we're about to disrupt your regular programming with some hard-hitting truths and thought-provoking insights. Let's get started. Let's go. This week in Anarchist and Radical News, we've got some buzzworthy news to talk about today, and it's all about animal rights. Are you ready for this? The headline from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel reads, Animal Activist Raid Freeze Thousands of Mink from Wisconsin Fur Farm. On August 11th, from 11 p.m. to about 3.45 in the morning, a group of activists pulled off a daring operation. They freed around 3,000 mink from Olson Fur Farm over in Lincoln, Wisconsin. And guess what? The local sheriff's office is on high alert, trying to find out who did it. Now, why is this such a big deal? Well, let me throw some numbers at you. You might not know this, but Wisconsin is actually the top state in mink pelt production. According to the USDA, we're talking about 571,750 mink pelts just last year. That means that many killed in one year with an industry value of a whopping $39.2 million. All right, ready for the kicker? The Animal Liberation Front, also known as ALF, they've claimed responsibility for the whole thing. Their message is pretty clear. We hope many of the mink enjoy their freedom in the wild, and this action serves as a catalyst for the farm to leave the fur industry forever. First off, let's consider the long-term impact of an action like this. Wisconsin isn't just any state. It's a major hub for the mink fur industry. When 3,000 minks are suddenly freed, it's not just a hiccup for the local farmers. It's a wake-up call. Actions like these could very well be the tipping point encouraging these farmers to reconsider their role in an industry built on animal exploitation. And the ultimate goal? Reducing the number of animals bred for their fur and consequently preventing animal suffering. Now you might be asking, what about the law? Well, it's worth mentioning that while law enforcement is on the case, The law itself often protects property over lives. In this case, remember that the property we're talking about are sentient beings. Although illegal, the Animal Liberation Front's actions aim to address what they see as a moral failing in the law. If these acts make society rethink the ethics of animal farming, then the ALF would argue that the legal risks are a small price to pay for systemic change. And how does the public perceive all of this? The ALF often gets labeled as extremist, but let's unpack that term momentarily. What's really more extreme, liberating animals from a life of suffering or being the one to confine them in the first place? The ALF challenges the societal norms we often take for granted and forces us to confront the ethical implications of our choices. They act as a catalyst for a much needed public discourse on animal rights. If you're thinking this sounds familiar, you're right. The Olson Fur Farm was targeted once before, back in 1997, when 800 minks were freed. Some may see this as history repeating itself, but it's more of a testament to the persistence of the ALF's cause. It's a sobering reminder that despite decades of activism, the need for direct action remains as urgent as ever. And finally, let's revisit the philosophical backbone of the ALF. This isn't random. It's not hooliganism. It's targeted activism that aligns perfectly with ALF's foundational guidelines, especially when it comes to inflicting economic damage on those who profit from animal suffering and liberating animals from places of abuse. Before we wrap this up, you will want to hang around 
if this conversation has sparked something in you. A radical guy, that's what this that's is. is. Highlighting the diverse world of resistance. Coming up next in Resistance Around the World, we'll be diving into the philosophical bedrock of the Animal Liberation Front. We'll explore how they've evolved and diversified their methods to become one of the most talked about and most controversial activist groups on the planet. So as you digest all that we've discussed, I challenge you to think critically about the often unquestioned assumptions that prop up industries like fur farming. Are they in alignment with your ethical compass? If not, what are you prepared to do about it? These are the kinds of provocative questions that the actions of groups like the Animal Liberation Front thrust upon us whether we're ready for them or not. It's uncomfortable, yes, but sometimes growth only happens when we're willing to sit with that discomfort and really examine it. Welcome to another installment of Resistance Around the World. For those of you who are perhaps new to radical politics or social activism, today's segment might introduce you to some ideas that are both compelling and controversial. We're diving into the world of the Animal Liberation Front commonly known by its acronym ALF, and its place within the larger sphere of animal rights activism. Now, if you're scratching your head wondering what all of this is about, let me break it down. At its core, the animal rights movement argues for the ethical consideration of animals, which could range from advocating for humane treatment in animal agriculture to entirely rejecting the use of animals for food, testing, or entertainment. The idea isn't just about treating animals nicely while still exploiting them. It's about questioning the very systems and ideologies that justify the exploitation in the first place. As for ALF, think of it as one of the most radical expressions of this movement. While most animal rights advocates work within legal frameworks, pushing for policy changes or engaging in public awareness campaigns, ALF takes a different route. They engage in direct action often illegal, to liberate animals from what they consider to be oppressive conditions. It's a topic that elicits strong opinions, and for a good reason. But before we dive into the nitty-gritty of ALF's strategies and philosophies, let's travel back in time to understand the historical and philosophical underpinnings that led to its formation. The notion of advocating for animal welfare has a long and textured history. Let's start with a trip back to 19th century Britain, where a group known as the Bands of Mercy emerged. Composed mainly of young people, these bands encouraged acts of kindness toward animals, a relatively revolutionary concept at a time when animal welfare was hardly a societal focus. These groups were sometimes affiliated with churches or schools and aimed to cultivate compassion among the younger generation. They even had pledge cards and badges to formalize the commitment. Though not radical by today's standards, they were a significant step in recognizing that animals were deserving of ethical consideration. In a society where practices like bear baiting were still in living memory, the Bands of Mercy served as a moral counterpoint, urging people to consider the well-being of animals in their daily lives. Fast forward to the 1970s, and another group inspired by the name and ethos of the Bands of Mercy comes into existence. However, let's be clear. This was not a continuation of the original Bands of Mercy. Rather, it was a new group that drew inspiration from the ideals of the 1800s movement, but adapted them to a modern, more radical context. This 1970s incarnation was far more confrontational and direct in their approach, often involving themselves in anti-vivisection campaigns and other forms of direct activism. This more radicalized version of Bands of Mercy serves as a precursor to the Animal Liberation Front, ALF. So when we talk about ALF, it's essential to see it as part of an evolving tapestry of animal rights activism with historical threads that stretch back over centuries rather than as an isolated phenomenon. So whether you're a seasoned activist or someone who's just starting to question societal norms, stay tuned. We will examine the philosophical evolution, the guidelines that shape ALF's actions, their methods and tactics, and their influence globally and within the broader animal rights movement. There's a lot to unpack here, which makes it a topic worthy of deep discussion. Let's get started, shall we? ALF's foundation is rooted in direct action, an ideological tapestry woven together by strands of anarchism, deep ecology, and a disdain for speciesism. The organization's guidelines serve as its ideological compass, emphasizing a decentralized structure devoid of any formal hierarchy. This absence is by design, acting as a firebreak of sorts regarding legal responsibility. 
It's a clever way to operate under the radar while still being incredibly impactful. This isn't just academic jargon. It's the ideological backbone that informs ALF's actions and strategies. First up is the concept of speciesism. For those unfamiliar with the term, speciesism is a form of discrimination that involves treating members of one species as morally more important than members of other species. It's akin to racism or sexism, but applied to species. In simpler terms, it's the belief that human needs and desires automatically outweigh those of other animals. ALF fundamentally rejects this notion, arguing that all sentient beings have inherent value and rights. Next, let's talk about direct action, a term that might sound straightforward but carries specific nuances. In the context of ALF, direct action refers to activities that aim to achieve social or political change through immediate intervention rather than through advocacy or policy reform. ALF's brand of direct action often involves breaking the law to achieve its goals, such as liberating animals from labs or farms. Now, on to decentralized structure. For those unfamiliar with the concept, think of it not like a traditional company with a CEO at the top and workers at the bottom, but more like the internet, a network where each node or participant has equal potential to influence the whole. Just as the internet doesn't have a single controlling entity, ALF's decentralized structure means there's no single point of authority. This network-like model isn't just a utopian ideal. It has real-world, strategic implications. Much like taking down one website won't shut down the entire internet, removing one node or member from ALF doesn't halt its operations. This makes it challenging for authorities to pinpoint a leader or a central command, providing a sort of built-in buffer against legal repercussions. The philosophical fabric of ALF is also woven with threads of anarchism and deep ecology. Anarchism here isn't about chaos and disorder, but a rejection of unjust hierarchies and coercive systems. Deep ecology extends the value and rights to non-human elements of the environment, advocating for an ecocentric, as opposed to anthropocentric, view of the world. So, when we examine ALF, it's essential to understand that its actions stem from a complex interplay of these philosophical and ethical ideas. Their guidelines, methods, and even their organizational structure aren't arbitrary choices, but are deeply rooted in a multifaceted ideological landscape. Understanding this landscape not only demystifies ALF, but also opens up broader questions about our ethical responsibilities toward all sentient beings and the planet. Before we get into the nitty gritty, let's first list the ALF guidelines, the fundamental principles that guide all actions taken under the ALF banner. Inflict economic damage on those who profit from the misery and exploitation of animals. Liberate animals from places of abuse and place them in good homes where they may live out their natural lives, free from suffering. Reveal the horror and atrocities committed against animals behind locked doors by performing nonviolent direct actions and liberations. Take all necessary precautions against harming any animal, human and non-human. Any group of vegans who carry out actions according to ALF guidelines have the right to regard themselves as part of the ALF. Now that you've heard the guidelines, let's dig a bit deeper into what each one really means. Inflict economic damage. This isn't about wanton destruction. ALF specifically targets industries and facilities that profit from animal exploitation. The goal is to make animal exploitation financially unsustainable. It's strategy over chaos. The economic impact is a means to an ethical end. To put this into context, ALF activists have been known to sabotage machinery in fur farms or liberate animals from testing facilities, leading to financial losses for these businesses. It's a calculated tactic aimed at making the exploitation of animals an unprofitable venture. Liberate animals. This goes beyond merely freeing animals. ALF ensures these animals are rehomed in environments where they can live free from exploitation and suffering. It's not just about the act of liberation, but ensuring a better life afterward. Reveal the atrocities. ALF acts as the eyes and ears for those who can't see behind the walls of labs, farms, and other exploitative institutions. They document and disseminate their findings, providing the public with information often kept hidden. Do no harm. This is ALF's ethical cornerstone. Every action is carefully planned to minimize harm to all beings, human and non-human alike. It's about achieving goals without causing collateral damage. In their operations, ALF activists go to great lengths to ensure no harm comes to any living being. 
For example, in operations involving the liberation of animals from fur farms, activists have been known to carry out extensive surveillance to ensure that no workers or animals are harmed during the action. Open membership. This is fascinating because it shows how ALF is less of an organization and more of a banner under which like-minded activists can operate. If you're vegan and you adhere to these guidelines, you're part of the ALF. It's a decentralized grassroots model that allows for a wide range of people to contribute to the cause. Each of these guidelines serves as a nuanced expression of ALF's broader philosophical stance, which incorporates elements of direct action, deep ecology, and a strong commitment to anti-speciesism. Far from being a random or arbitrary list, these guidelines offer a coherent ethical and strategic framework that informs all of ALF's activities. So when we discuss ALF, understanding these guidelines helps us get to the heart of the matter, shedding light on both the how and the why behind their actions. All right, folks, now that we've got a grasp on the principles that guide ALF, let's talk about how they put those principles into action. ALF is known for its diverse range of tactics, each carefully chosen to align with their guidelines. Direct action. This is the bread and butter of ALF's activism. But what does it look like? It could involve physically breaking into a facility to free animals, sometimes using bolt cutters to open cages, or even employing lockpicking skills. Unlike traditional protests, direct action takes the fight straight to the point of injustice. In 2007, ALF activists broke into Huntingdon Life Sciences, HLS, in Cambridgeshire, UK, and executed a major operation. They liberated around 1,500 animals, including dogs, cats, rabbits, monkeys, and pigs. Beyond just freeing these animals, they also destroyed lab equipment, causing an estimated 2 million pounds, or about 4 million US dollars in 2007 currency, in damages. The ALF publicly claimed responsibility for the action, stating it was a targeted strike against HLS's cruel and unnecessary animal experiments. The fallout was significant. The operation led to a public outcry against animal testing and forced HLS to close its UK operation. Sabotage. ALF has been known to disable machinery or equipment used in animal exploitation. This could mean anything from defacing billboards advertising fur products to disabling trucks used in animal transportation. In 2019, ALF activists targeted Hallamshire Transport, a UK-based company known for transporting livestock to slaughterhouses. The activists slashed the tires of the company's trucks and left behind spray-painted messages like, Animals are not commodities, and stop the trucks to hell. The financial impact was immediate. The company estimated that the tire damage alone cost them £10,000, which is roughly $13,000 USD in 2019 currency. But the ripple effects went even further. Hallamshire had to cancel several deliveries, disrupting their business operations. Consequently, the company announced that they were considering pivoting their business model to focus on transporting non-animal goods like food and beverages. Documentation and Exposure Armed with cameras and sometimes hidden microphones, ALF acts as an undercover investigator to expose the dark corners of animal exploitation. In 2015, ALF took their cameras inside a chicken factory farm in Iowa to capture the conditions that most of us can't even imagine. The footage they released was nothing short of horrifying. Chickens were seen crammed into minuscule cages, living in their own waste, many of them visibly sick or injured. After ALF released the footage, it went viral, sparking a nationwide conversation in the United States about the ethics of factory farming. The images from that Iowa chicken farm stand as some of the most shocking and impactful ever captured, putting a spotlight on an industry that thrives in the shadows. However, it's essential to note that despite the increased awareness and calls for reform, factory farming remains a significant industry, and the suffering continues. Online Activism in the digital age, ALF has expanded their battleground to include the virtual world. They've been known to target the websites and digital infrastructures of companies profiting from animal exploitation. Through cyber campaigns, they extend their reach and impact, leveraging the power of social media and digital communities to disseminate information and rally support. Education and Advocacy Although they're known for their more confrontational tactics, ALF also engages in educational campaigns, often distributing literature that explains the ethical reasons behind their actions. 
After a high-profile liberation of minks from a fur farm, supporters of the ALF distributed pamphlets in the local community to explain why the action was taken and to educate people about the fur industry. Community support. Believe it or not, ALF also works to support other social justice causes, recognizing the interconnectedness of different forms of exploitation and injustice. In 2013, ALF threw their weight behind a campaign to halt the construction of a hydroelectric dam in the Amazon rainforest. The proposed dam would have had disastrous consequences, flooding vast areas of the forest and displacing thousands of local residents. ALF's position was clear. The dam would be an environmental catastrophe, devastating not just the human communities, but also the myriad species that call the Amazon home. The ALF also got involved in the battle to stop the logging of old-growth forests in British Columbia. The logging operations threatened to wipe out the habitats of several endangered species, including the grizzly bear. ALF argued that the logging was not just ecologically destructive, but also replaceable by more sustainable forestry practices. As you can see, ALF's methods and tactics are as diverse as they are controversial but each one serves a purpose and is meticulously planned to adhere to their guidelines. They range from the dramatic to the subtle, from the physical to the digital, but all aim to challenge the systems and beliefs that perpetuate animal suffering. By examining these methods, we can appreciate the multifaceted and deeply strategic nature of ALF's activism. Whether you agree with them or not, it's hard to deny that their actions provoke thought and force society to confront uncomfortable truths about how we treat animals. When we talk about ALF, it's easy to pigeonhole them as a movement rooted in Western activism. But that's only a fraction of the story. ALF's reach has extended across continents, and its influence has been felt from the streets of London to the rainforests of Brazil. Let's journey across the globe to understand the international footprint of this enigmatic organization. European stronghold, ALF's roots are in the United Kingdom, where it was initially formed but its impact has been keenly felt across Europe, from anti-bullfighting campaigns in Spain to protests against fur farming in Scandinavia. Each country brings its unique challenges and triumphs, shaping the European landscape of animal rights activism. North American activism. In the United States and Canada, ALF has been particularly active in challenging factory farming and animal testing labs. These regions also serve as fertile grounds for ALF's educational campaigns, aiming to shift the cultural conversation around animal rights. Asia-Pacific Expansions While the movement is newer in this region, ALF-inspired groups have emerged in countries like Australia, Japan, and even India. Here, the activism often intersects with indigenous beliefs and traditions, creating a complex but fascinating dynamic. Latin American Strides in countries like Brazil and Argentina, ALF has supported efforts against deforestation and the endangerment of local species. Their involvement often dovetails with broader environmental and indigenous rights movements. African initiatives. ALF's influence is nascent but growing in Africa. From combating the exotic animal trade in South Africa to opposing poaching in Kenya, the organization is gradually making its presence felt. Middle Eastern undercurrents. While not as publicly visible due to the complex political landscape, there are rumblings of ALF-inspired activism in the Middle East. One noteworthy example occurred in 2020 in Lebanon, where activists targeting the illegal pet trade conducted operations reminiscent of ALF's tactics. This move represented a considerable risk given the region's intricate social and political dynamics, but also highlighted the universality of the animal rights cause. The Lebanese example shows that even in areas where activism might be less visible or openly discussed, the ethos of ALF finds a way to inspire direct action against animal exploitation. The digital diaspora. Beyond physical geography, ALF has a robust online community that transcends national borders. Digital platforms serve as meeting points where activists from diverse backgrounds share strategies, coordinate actions, and offer moral support. By examining ALF's global reach, we come to understand that this isn't just a localized or Western phenomenon. It's a global movement with localized expressions, each adapting to its unique cultural, legal, and social environment. The common thread? A commitment to ending animal exploitation and suffering, no matter where it occurs. ALF's role in the broader animal rights movement is complex and multifaceted, 
While they may be one of the more radical groups on the spectrum, their actions have had undeniable ripple effects, shaping the discourse and pushing the envelope in ways that have benefited more mainstream organizations. Here's a breakdown of some of the key ways ALF has influenced the mainstream animal rights movement, shifting public awareness. ALF's direct actions and the media attention they garner often bring obscured issues into the public eye. For example, undercover footage from factory farms has led to public outcries and greater scrutiny of industrial agriculture, benefiting the larger animal rights agenda. Normalizing radical ideas. Ideas once considered radical, such as the complete abolition of animal testing or factory farming, have slowly made their way into mainstream conversations. While ALF isn't solely responsible for this shift, their uncompromising stance has undoubtedly played a part. Legal reforms. ALF's actions have sometimes triggered legal responses that, while intended to curb radical activism, have also catalyzed the mainstream movement to become more organized and strategic in their campaigns for policy change. Tactical inspiration. While mainstream animal rights organizations generally operate within legal frameworks, the direct action tactics of ALF have inspired some of these groups to adopt more assertive, though legal, approaches to their activism. Resource sharing. The information and footage gathered by ALF during their operations often serve as valuable resources for mainstream organizations. This data aids in education and advocacy efforts, adding weight and credibility to campaigns. Cross-movement alliances. ALF's willingness to collaborate with other social justice and environmental movements has set a precedent for broader coalitions, encouraging mainstream animal rights groups to seek alliances with organizations focused on issues like climate change or labor rights. Crisis response. ALF's rapid action capabilities often fill a void in situations that require immediate intervention, such as natural disasters affecting animals. These actions bring quick relief and also pave the way for mainstream organizations to step in for longer-term solutions. Ethical debate. Perhaps one of ALF's most significant contributions is the ethical questions they pose, forcing both individuals and organizations to confront the moral implications of their choices regarding animals. This has led to a deeper, more nuanced dialogue within the mainstream movement about the ethics of animal treatment. By digging into these facets, it becomes clear that ALF's influence isn't confined to the fringes, but permeates the animal rights movement as a whole whether it's pushing mainstream organizations to rethink their tactics or adding urgency to the public discourse, ALF's footprint is unmistakable. Even if you don't align with all of their methods or philosophies, it's hard to deny that they've been a catalyst for change, challenging us all to think more critically about our relationship with animals. One of the more intriguing aspects of ALF's activism is its ability to connect and collaborate with other social movements. This isn't merely a matter of shared hashtags or social media shoutouts. ALF's alliances are substantive, strategic, and rooted in a shared ethos of resistance against various forms of exploitation and oppression. Environmental activism. As we mentioned earlier, ALF has been involved in campaigns against environmentally destructive projects, such as the hydroelectric dam in the Amazon rainforest and the logging of old growth forests in British Columbia. This crossover isn't accidental, but stems from a shared understanding that animal liberation and environmental preservation are two sides of the same coin. Human rights. While ALF's primary focus is on non-human animals, they recognize that human exploitation often goes hand in hand with animal abuse. For example, factory farms are not just sites of animal suffering. They're also places of low wage hazardous labor. By tackling animal exploitation, ALF indirectly addresses human rights issues too. Indigenous rights. ALF's activism has sometimes intersected with indigenous struggles, particularly when it comes to protecting sacred lands from destructive practices like mining or logging. While not always front and center, these alliances highlight the interconnectedness of land, animals, and indigenous culture. Anti-capitalist movements, ALF's guidelines, especially those regarding the infliction of economic damage on exploitative enterprises, resonate with anti-capitalist ideologies. While ALF may not explicitly identify as an anti-capitalist organization, their actions align with broader critiques of capitalist exploitation, which often includes both human and animal labor. Civil liberties and surveillance. ALF's clandestine operations and the subsequent legal crackdowns have led them to common cause with civil liberties organizations. Issues around surveillance, 
free speech, and the right to protest are as pertinent to ALF as they are to broader social justice movements. Intersectional veganism. ALF's veganism is not merely a dietary choice, but a political stance, intersecting with issues like racial and economic justice. By promoting a form of veganism that is conscious of these intersections, ALF aligns itself with a broader social justice movement. Anti-war and anti-imperialism. While not a primary focus, ALF's overarching ethos of nonviolence and liberation aligns them with anti-war movements, especially those that highlight the environmental and animal casualties of military conflicts. Global solidarity. As noted earlier, ALF-inspired actions have even taken root in regions like the Middle East, indicating a form of global solidarity that transcends geographical and cultural barriers. The point is, ALF doesn't exist in a vacuum. Their activism is part of a larger ecosystem of resistance movements, each with its own focus, but all interconnected in the struggle against various forms of exploitation and injustice. By examining these connections, we can better appreciate the multidimensional nature of ALF's activism and how it fits into a broader tapestry of global resistance. All right, folks, we've covered a lot of ground today, diving into the intricate world of the Animal Liberation Front and its role in the broader animal rights movement and beyond. ALF isn't a standalone phenomenon, but part of a historical continuum of animal rights activism dating back to the Bands of Mercy in the 1800s and evolving through various phases and strategies. ALF's actions aren't arbitrary, but deeply rooted in a complex framework of anti-speciesism, direct action, and a commitment to decentralized, non-hierarchical structures. From direct action and sabotage to online activism and community alliances, ALF employs a diverse array of methods, all aligned with their guiding principles. ALF's influence isn't confined to any one country. It's a global movement that's inspired actions as far away as Lebanon and has intersections with other global issues like environmentalism and human rights. ALF recognizes the interconnectedness of different forms of exploitation and injustice, seeking alliances with environmental, human rights, and other social justice movements. As we wrap up this segment, let's not just file away what we've learned as interesting trivia. Instead, let's engage thoughtfully with these insights. Whether you agree with ALF's methods or not, the issues they raise about animal exploitation, ethical consideration, and systemic change are too important to ignore. Question your own practices. How do your own lifestyle choices contribute to or combat systemic exploitation? Read more, learn more. If this episode piqued your interest, dig into the literature, both supporting and critical, to expand your understanding of these issues. Join the conversation. Engage with us and others on social media to discuss these complex issues. Challenge us, agree with us, provide different perspectives. Lastly, if you find that you're aligned with the goals of animal liberation or social justice, consider taking action in your own way. This doesn't have to mean joining ALF or engaging in illegal activities. It could mean becoming an advocate, volunteering, or even just making more ethical consumer choices. So as you go about your week, keep these ideas in mind. Let them simmer, challenge your preconceptions, and maybe even inspire you to action. Until next time, keep questioning, keep challenging, and above all, keep engaging. Radical education, yeah, yeah, a better future, what we really need, not rooted in capitalism or supremacy. We've just wrapped up a riveting discussion and resistance around the world about the Animal Liberation Front, and now it's time for About a Radical Guide. In this segment, we're turning our gaze towards Australia to feature an inspiring initiative that's making a real impact in the realm of direct activism. Get ready to learn about the Direct Action Movement, or DAM for short. DAM was founded by the multifaceted Jessica Williams. She's not just a campaign director and political lobbyist, but also a radical eco-cultural feminist, community builder, mother, and more. Through DAM, she aims to provide a virtual space where activism is made accessible to all, regardless of your life circumstances. The mission. Simply put, DAM aims to get you activated and involved in your community. They offer a wide range of resources from educational materials to firsthand accounts from activists around the globe. They're all about creating positive change for both sentient beings and the environment. 
The world of activism can be intimidating, but DAM is here to break down those barriers. They provide the info and the tools to get you up to speed, turning the uninitiated into effective activists. If you're sitting there intrigued but uncertain where to begin, let me direct you to the Direct Action Movement. It's an initiative that's not just inviting your participation, but is outright calling for it. If you're keen to explore more about the Direct Action Movement, you'll find additional resources and information on our platform, A Radical Guide. Just visit RadicalGuide.com to dive deeper into this empowering initiative. Let's go! As we wind down this episode, I hope you're leaving with a deeper understanding and perhaps a newfound respect for the various forms of resistance and activism we've discussed today. From the controversial yet impactful actions of the Animal Liberation Front to the empowering resource hub that is the direct action movement in Australia, it's evident that the road to change is as diverse as it is challenging. But what's the takeaway here? It's not merely to applaud or critique these initiatives from the sidelines. No, the aim is to stir something in you, to provoke thought, to incite action. These groups are not anomalies. They are manifestations of collective frustration, courage, and hope. They're the result of individuals just like you deciding that enough is enough. So, as you go about your week, ponder this. What are you willing to stand up for? What change do you wish to see in the world? And more importantly, what are you willing to do about it? These aren't rhetorical questions. They're a call to action, a challenge for you to rise to. If you're keen on diving deeper into any of the topics we've covered today, be sure to visit A Radical Guide. You'll find an array of resources to help you on your journey of activism and resistance. Just head over to RadicalGuide.com and immerse yourself in a world that challenges the status quo at every turn. Now, if you want to contribute, there are a couple of ways you can support a Radical Guide. First, by adding locations of resistance to our map, you help build a living history of activism. Your input makes it a richer, more comprehensive resource for all. Second, consider supporting us financially. Every contribution helps us maintain this platform as a free and accessible resource for everyone. Thank you for tuning into this episode of A Radical Podcast. We're grateful to have you as part of our ever-growing community of thinkers, doers, and changemakers. Until next time, keep questioning, keep resisting, and most importantly, keep striving for a world where justice isn't just an ideal, but a reality for all. Yeah, talking freedom and liberation Worldwide, not just only for the nation A radical guide, it's time to make changes Bringing interviews and radical education Yeah, yeah, a better future, what we really need Not rooted in capitalism or supremacy Yeah, yeah, trust, you don't want to miss it We bring the truth right to you The past, present, and future, let's go A, a radical guide, that's what this is Highlighting the diverse world of resistance Let's go